Welcome to episode 30, That Drink. Please turn on closed captioning if it's not already on, and let me tell you the story and see if you can figure it out. So, not long ago, I was in this club one night trying to be nice. Because when me and a friend got to the club, after we passed an empty bar on the first floor, we went up about four flights of stairs and didn't see anybody. So we walked back down to ask the bartender where was everybody. So he told us we had to keep walking up to the roof. As you go up the stairs on most floors, there was an offshoot leading to a spot where you could have a small gathering just on that floor. So we made it to the roof where there was a small crowd but spread out and we stayed for a while drinking drinks we had got from the bartender we had got directions from. Ah, those drinks. But we had to be up sort of early the following morning for this thing we were in town to go to, so we were looking to leave about 1 a.m. On our way down, we stopped for a while on one floor where they had this small table and two chairs to the side, midway between the stairs that were on each side of the narrow room. Because we were going to give me time to finish my drink before we went out. Ah, that drink. It was one of several flavors of these slush type drinks with hedonistic names in these elevated clear mini barrels behind a ground floor bar. Names like Viagra, Booty Call, Happy Ending, Purple Orgasm. The friend I was with chose a drink flavor for both of us. The drink we got was called Suicide. Well, anyway, three young people, internal joke, a lucky girl with two guys, <laughs> were coming up from below, and as they came up a flight of stairs to the level where we were sitting, they turned to the right, away from us, going around a corner to the gathering spot on that floor, looking excited like, with the girl in particular waving her hands and dancing. But then, quickly, they came back our way, now looking, it seemed to me, a bit sub subdued, as if confused about which direction to walk to to get to the crowd. So they came past us and moved up to the next floor. Well then, a minute later, this other group of five or six girls, with perhaps four of them having their hair dyed yellow and pink, if I recall correctly, came up the stairs. They initially came towards us, then reverse course, then reverse course, going towards where the three other people had turned away from earlier. So I assumed they needed directions to get to the crowd, and shouted and clapped my hands, trying to get their attention to tell them they were going in the wrong direction. Just trying to be nice. But they disappeared around the corner and didn't come back right away. As more and more people came up the stairs to our floor, I thought, wow, the place getting crowded just as we are leaving. But I also stopped trying to give directions. Guess you could say I let the newcomers decide which way they were going. I kept thinking to myself, I could have initially mis misinterpreted why one group went to the right and one group came left as they got to my floor for so many different reasons. Maybe one group wanted to use a small gathering spot on that floor and the other did not. Maybe one group, for whatever reason, didn't want to walk past me or us. And why did the group with the pink and yellow, if I am recalling correctly, here, leave soon thereafter? Could it be because they misinterpreted my shouting and clapping at them as being rude and insulting? So I thought, if it's so complex, let them make the decision. It's on them. And then I thought, am I abdicating my social responsibility? Ah, no. Not if it's a you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink situation. And finally, I thought to myself, man, 
I'm glad I didn't finish that drink.